So I think a rendering has come along quite nicely. But one thing that bugs me is um, the procedural distribution of points, so the way our triangles are shaped at the moment. How about scattering only points on the edges of an image? So what we need to do is find edges in an image. But before we do that, we need to talk. And we need to talk about kernels. So what is a kernel? As you know, an image consists of individual pixels, that is, individual image points. And what I've drawn here is just a really basic image. So here are my pixels, and half of them are this dark gray that I have in the background as well, and half of them, about half of them, are this brighter gray. And what a kernel is and what a kernel does is it works on an individual pixel. So I've drawn this example of a kernel. So if we consider this to be the pixel that we'd like to work on, the kernel is kind of a window that we move over it that takes into account the adjacent pixels here, those eight adjacent pixels. And in this example, our kernel comes with those values. So the center pixel has an eight in it, and all the adjacent pixels have a minus one in it. And the way a kernel is applied to an image works like this. You move the kernel over the pixel that you want to work on, so usually it's done row by row or column by column so that each pixel gets processed. And the first thing that's done when using a kernel is for each pixel you multiply the uh, value of the kernel here with the value that's in the pixel. So in our example that yields these multiplications. So in here those dark rays I gave them a value of 0.2 and those bright grays I gave them a value of 0.8. Nothing special here, all these adjacent pixels get multiplied by minus one, so they just get from positive to negative, and the center pixel gets multiplied by eight. So this yields these intermediate results. So those adjacent pixels here have just changed their prefix from plus to minus, while the center pixel got multiplied by eight, so it's eight times bigger now, its value is eight times bigger now. And after that, the thing that happens when processing a kernel is all those values get summed up, so they get added up to form a center value. So what I did here was just take these 1.6 and add all these values to it. So in this case our result is negative, which usually when you're working with an image would be clamped to zero, so um, a pixel can't have a negative brightness, a pixel just can not go to zero and then it's black. So in this case this pixel would be pitch black. However, when we look at other areas in the image, for example, this pixel here, this gets a value of 0.6, a medium gray. And when looking at a pixel that is surrounded by pixels with identical colors, so identical values, that becomes black as well. So what's happening here? When we look at those pixels as well, surrounded, this pixel is surrounded by pixels of the same value, of the same color, gets set to zero as well. So when we look at the whole image being processed, we end up with this. And hooray, we just found a tool that detects edges. So a kernel, depending on the values that you set it up with, so depending on those values can be used for multiple things. In our case, these values perform an edge detection. If you put in other values, um, you can use it, for example, to blur an image. And that is usually how blurring is done, for example, in Photoshop, or how edge detection is done in Photoshop. Where did I get those values? I didn't come up with them myself. Um, when you Google kernel with an image processing, you come up with this Wikipedia page, and it has several examples of kernels. So they are written in this format. With these basic examples, each comes an example image, so you can see what the kernel is doing with the image. And um, I chose this very aggressive kernel um, for an edge detection kernel in our example. And what we're going to do is um, build that kernel in Houdini.